Welcome. Thanks for being here for another episode of The Nonprofit Show. Again, welcome to you, William Schwab, CPA, Data Visualization Manager with your part-time controller. Welcome, Bill. Thank you very much. And I can't, I mean, almost 600 episodes. That is unbelievable. Congrats. Uh, congrats to you both. Uh, I remember, right? Because originally this was only supposed, you know, this was only going to go on for a couple of weeks, right? And look at, look at this. It's amazing. So. <laughs> Well, you know, we've learned a lot of words uh, and a lot of <laughs> concepts over these 600 issues. I got to say, data viz is one of them. Yeah. And when I first heard that, I'm like, okay, that's ridiculous. Somebody just made that up. And now yeah. data viz, it's a hot topic and it's even in your title. It is. Yes, it is. Yeah. And, and, and a whole group within just within YPTC dedicated to it, our, what we call our data visualization group or DVG. Yeah. <laughs> okay, what? So, so talk to us about this whole concept because you're you're telling us that we need to really look at how we're presenting information first mm -hmm. and and understanding this at a core level, not just because it's fun or different, but this is really something that's going to help all of us understand the numbers. Is that right? It, it really is, because if, if you think about it, um, you know, we, we always say, you know, for, and it's funny, I, I say this as an accountant, right? Like I've spent my, the, the better part of my professional career preparing, understanding, interpreting, and explaining balance sheets and income statements. And now I'm saying, well, maybe that doesn't matter as much, but it does, because we're just saying, look, hum, as, as human beings, we are confronted with so much information on on a on a daily basis on a minute by minute basis even and and certainly the pandemic has served to accelerate that so you know you think of your typical nonprofit executive director and just the the number of information streams with which they're bombarded by sitting down to read through a financial statement is not something they're going to have time for but there's important information there and there's important stories to be told there and that's where the data visualization component comes in it's really helping to highlight and pointing to and saying this this right here this this is what the most important story is <laughs> I love this, Bill. One of the things I think of for data visualization, like that is right up um, the, I don't know, what, what do you want to call it? Right up the lane, if you will, for the board of directors. Because I also Absolutely. remember thinking yep. dashboards, charts, graphs, you know, pivot tables. That is what board members really eat up because it provides yep. data in such a visual way that is easier to grasp. Now, I myself, Bill, I'm a very visual person, very. You can tell me what's on a chart and it means nothing until I can see it. Mm -hmm. So I love that we're talking about this because I'm listening, you know, truly from how we might present information to our board, but it's actually more about all stakeholder groups. Is that correct? It, it, it really is. And I'm, I'm glad you mentioned the board. I know I focused in on an executive director, but what we've seen from, from our experience at YPTC is it's really many diverse constituent groups and stakeholders within nonprofits. They may not know that they're asking for graphics, but they're asking questions that can best be answered by a graphic, right? So it's like, you know, maybe you have a, a development director who's looking at data and say, oh my gosh, like these fundraising statistics are amazing. We need to highlight them to our board. Or maybe a board member is saying, I, I see this number on our, you know, on our balance sheet, uh, you know, it's telling us how much cash we have. Well, is that enough, not enough, too much? What, what's the context behind it? And then maybe on the flip side of that, back to my executive director example, an executive director might be saying, you know, these numbers here, this is what we have to highlight for our board. And all of those can be answered by, by a data visualization. <laughs> yeah. Another thing I really have gotten into is infographics. And I love having, you know, mm -hmm. a sheet that literally is graphics of information. So it really is that visualization of data. And I've seen, Bill, a lot of annual reports 
move into an impact report, like instead of having a 27, 28 page, you know, brochure, it's simplifying into maybe a variety of infographics, but ways in which that can be used. This, this very sage woman told me once, never cook one thing for dinner that you can't have multiple, <laughs> multiple options for. So I think about this in a meatloaf strategy, right? It's like, okay, we have the ground beef, we have the data, how else might we use that ingredient, if you mm -hmm. will, to repackage and repurpose. So Julia, mm -hmm. I think of you all the time because that to me is, is such a critical component um, for these graphics. No, that's, I like the meatloaf uh, comparison. Now, now we have a term, we, we, we call one when we're taking data from different sources to combine the visualization, we call it, a, that a, that's a data smoothie. So you can add that one to your repertoire as, as well, like that. right? That's In, good to do. Yeah, okay. mixing together whatever flavors uh, flavors you want, but but it's so it's so true. And you mentioned you know you mentioned annual reports, and we're seeing we're seeing more and more clients asking for us to help them uh, you know get those impact statistics in embedded in their annual reports. But even better, because all right, as great as an annual report is, it's it's basically obsolete as soon as it's published, right? So we've yeah. even had clients coming to us and saying these statistics that we put in our annual report that said, here's our impact, let's refresh that on a regular basis and keep it on our website. And so that at any point in time, funders, the general public, all those stakeholders, they can come in and see at a glance the impact that the organization is having. So talk to us then, I, I'm hearing like, maybe we need some data visualization that stays static and maybe we need some that remains dynamic meaning yep. we can update it. And what does that look like? Static versus dynamic? Sure. So, so really static, you know, if you think of static, um, you know, in its simplest form, it, it really is, you know, what you see is what you get, you know, it's a graph, it's as of a point in time, right? So, you know, let's say something as simple, uh, you know, as looking at, uh, you know, a cash forecast, certainly something of, of, of great interest to, to so many nonprofits out there. Um, but it's it's there because it tells a specific story. Now, that's not to say that that story is not going to change from month to month. So when we stay static, we don't mean we only do it one time and that's it. Maybe that graphic was created to tell a one-time story, but that's not to say that it's not going to adapt and change to tell either an evolving story or a different story in, in coming months. And we've even had clients where, you know, maybe we've prepared that that cash forecast or that or that that chart that shows revenue and they've come back and said okay this is great and now based on what we're seeing here we're going to take action on this so now we want the next version of this graphic to now chart our progress towards this goal that we've set for ourselves Ooh, i love it that's super nerdy <laughs> yeah that's super nerdy one of the things I, I'm not a numbers person. Like I, I know what I know and I know what I don't know, Bill. And I will tell you, I'm not a numbers person. Uh, staring at financial documents is like, it's Greek, you know, like I can comprehend it, but it's going to take me longer than the average bear probably to really grasp it. And it's a little embarrassing. I'm saying this on national live webcast. <laughs> However, that's the truth. So seeing this in a visual, visual concept, Julie, it makes me think we've had some amazing guests on that talk about, you know, being of board service and you're going to meet some today that you said you haven't even seen in person. But the statistics we've heard really is it takes about a year or two years before a board member truly gets into their own and their confidence to ask questions, especially about the financials. So having the static dynamic document or, you know, possibilities, I think, helps to engage the board members at a deeper level. Have you have you seen that to be true? Yeah, ab absolutely. And I think, and, and Julie, I think one of the, the slides we have today speaks to like these three core concepts of, of design principles. And that feeds a lot into to, to what you were saying, Jarrett, where it's, um, you know, the, that, that first concept that we talk about is we want to, um, you know, we want to invite the reader in, right? You know, I mean, I think most board members, and, and, and I, I mentioned this earlier, you know, I've spent the bulk of my career as, as an accountant, I'm a CPA, right? But to your point, Jared, you know, some folks, they're, 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 
they, they, they're not they're not numbers folks and that's okay and quite frankly the, the the human mind is just wired to absorb images far more readily than it's than it's wired to 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 absorb numbers so in those core concepts we say you know invite the reader in you know make them want to engage in in the content and and we kind of use it in and and when we and and we've done some of this training internally for for our staff as well we we give the example of something being either foreboding or inviting and and we use the example we actually put two pictures up on the screen we do this we the one picture we put up we, we, we literally put a graphic up of this big old stone prison and we say right would you feel invited and the point is you're actually not supposed to feel invited right it's supposed to make you feel uninvited but yet that's how a lot of traditional financial statements are they are foreboding they're they don't have that sense of inviting whereas if you build the visualization right, it says to the reader, hey, there's a lot of really great information in here. You, you need to come in and see this. <laughs> I love, I so appreciate that. Um, because when I think of who's around the board table and then how do we get, because we truly want board members to engage in conversation. We want them to ask questions. We want them you know, to ask the hard questions. That's their mm -hmm. job. And I love that, that you share that it seems so basic. Um, however, I am curious, um, how do we put this in a visual way if we're not a graphics person, right? Mm -hmm. Like how do we make this, if you will, so remedial to create a visualization in a way that if we're not a graphics, you know, marketing yeah. person, how do we do this? Yep. Yep. It, it really leads into um, the other two core design concepts that we have. So, you know, I mentioned the first one that, you know, invite the reader in. So once we've gotten them through the door, right, you know, we, we uh, you know, we're, we're not, you know, it's a, it's a welcoming door as opposed to the, the prison analogy that I use, but we the say, you know, own slab yeah, and the moat and the fire say, breathing you know, dragon. <laughs> In, in the visualization world um, and in designing a good visualization, right, less is more, right? And we always say, like, tune out the noise and turn up the story. So I like to use the example, you know, think of, um, you know, think of, think of like a word search game, right? You know, that, that we all, that we all did in school in elementary school, right? Where we're spending time trying to find the words on the page. Um, that's a fun exercise, but it's not a fun exercise if you're a board member trying to read a financial statement. And quite honestly, that's what a traditionally formatted financial statement might look like. So, you know, you, you almost need to, uh, you know, give the board member that word search with the answers already circled. So you're pointing to them saying, this is the story. This is what's most important. And that's what we say by, by tune out the noise, get rid of what you don't need and just focus on, on what you do need. Um, which also then, leads into the the third core concept which is interpret explicitly you know make your point and and make your point multiple times right it's okay to it's okay to repeat yourself and say this is the important concept and maybe maybe it's a you know a text interpretation you're giving that then the graphic is serving to to support your to support your text we take a lot at YPTC kind of our our static uh, visualization standard that we've developed it actually takes a lot of inspiration from, from newspapers. And it does that on purpose, because if you think about how the page of a newspaper is laid out, it's laid out in such a way to draw the reader's eye to what's most important. You know, that headline grabs your attention, right? That's the invite the reader in and then invites you to dig, dig deeper into the story. <laughs> wow. I love that. I love, love, love that. Of course, I was in the newspaper business for 30 years. So thank you for saying that because I just love that. But I'm really interested in the mix between the storytelling and that static graphic. So you're really telling us that it's okay to paint the picture, if you will, and to lead that, that story as opposed to just saying, here are the numbers. Because it seems to me and I don't want to use the word manipulative, but it seems to me that you're leading them through a direction that you you want to mm -hmm. tell versus letting it being open for interpretation. Mm -hmm. And can you talk to us a little bit about that? 
Sure. And that really comes back a little bit to that distinction between what's, uh, you know, a static visualization or a dynamic visualization. Right. But let, but let's focus on 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 static first, because it's that it's that that, like you said, and like the slide shows here, it's that storytelling static graphic. Um, you know, it's telling an important story and it's interpreting, you know, all those design concepts I mentioned, it's interpreting explicitly for the reader. So we actually, you know, if you think of a, of a chart or graph, the very first thing we put on a chart and graph that we might do for a client, if, if you looked at the page, the biggest thing you're going to see at the top isn't actually the graph itself, it's it's a headline, you know, we, we call it a headline, literally like in a newspaper, like what is this chart telling you, you know, and, and maybe it's something saying, hey, and I'm, I'm, I'm just paraphrasing here, but but hey, you're running low on cash, your cash forecast isn't looking good for the next six months, right? Like we're not going to sugarcoat the bad news if there's bad news to be told, but likely if there's good news to be told, we're going to want to trumpet that success too and say, look at this, fan, you know, fundraising is up, you know, all revenue, you know, whatever it is, you know, you're, you're going to, you're basically giving away the answer first and that's okay. Because remember we said, what did I say? We said board members are pressed for time. Executive directors are pressed for time. It's okay. You don't never, never, bury the lead right Julia there, there's another old newspaper adage so it's okay to say here's what's most important here's that headline and then we give our interpretation well here's why that's important and then we get to the graph itself but if you only read the headline and the interpretation I'm not saying the graph's not important but if you only read the headline and the interpretation you already know the story that the graph is telling Wow, you know that's a great way to look at it. That's a great way to look at it because if you if you can understand that, um, to Jarrett's point, it seems to me that you're going to get board members that ask questions. Mm -hmm. But all too often, and anyone who's ever done any board service, you get the, these these numbers, these reports, and very very few people will ask questions. Yep, so um, true. They're intimidated. You know, there's the t the clock is ticking, and you're looking at that agenda, and you know you got to get through all these things, and so it seems to me with the data viz, you're going to have more of an opportunity to get everybody thinking about a particular area. It is. It's all about making the data accessible, right? Data equity. We want the accessible of the data accessible to all the stakeholders within the organization, both internal and external. Wow. And I'm As thinking too, the more. The more positive the headline is or the data is and your budget is probably less questions, right? Mm -hmm. Because when things are yep. working well, it's yep. why would we lift the hood and see what's going on, right? Right, for right. For me as a fundraiser, that is when I lift the hood because I'm thinking, okay, we know when things are dismal, we know what we need to do. But when things are really good, we don't often think about when things start to, to wax and wane. Right now, Bill, I've, I've seen um, a lot of my clients actually extreme um, experience extreme growth, which is good. However, mm -hmm. the reality is that's not in perpetuity. So what are we doing now right. to prepare for that three years down the road when that funding yep. starts to, to pull away. And um, that would be interesting to do an A-B test of these headlines and the data visualization mm -hmm. bill, and maybe you've done it before, is like share the same news, but one of them says, you know, basically, hey, we're up the creek without a paddle. And the other one says, we are loving this, you know, this ride, things, things are fantastic. And to see kind of how it's how it's managed from from that interpretation of the people. Yeah, it, it really is. And and you mentioned so many organizations that have had you know so much new funding over the past couple of years. And we actually had a client like that that we did a visualization for where it's like they were they they were doing great you know great fundraising results wonderful you know huge uptick over the last couple of years. But when you started to look at the detail, what the detail showed was yes, it's great that you're getting all this new revenue. But the pers but but a lot of it that's coming in is restricted. Yes. So while your restricted revenue is going up as a percentage of your total revenue, your unrestricted is actually going down. Right. And, and we actually kind of presented that as like a two part chart where we said, look, here's the total, which looks great. But here's the percentage of your unrestricted that actually shows that downward trend. So we're right. like, 
We're not saying this is a bad thing, but it's something you as a board and organization need to act upon and, and address. <laughs> and to be aware of, right? To mm -hmm. truly have that awareness so that we can get ahead of that and not have to be reactionary. Um, so that's that's really good. So moving into the storytelling, let's talk about the graphic placement. I'm curious to hear, mm -hmm. uh, Bill, what you and your team talk about when it comes to this tips for success in relation to graphic yep. placement. Educate us on this. Sure. So it's really about, um, you know, kind of understanding or, or kind of realizing and embracing the fact that a graphic can uh, a, a graphic that's created um, can be used in more than one place. You know, maybe it's going in an annual report. Maybe it's going in um, the monthly financial reports that the board is seeing. Maybe it's going on the organization's website. And all of that is okay and, and really should be embraced. And, and just understanding that, okay, you know, depending on the format of where this graph is going to end up, you know, we want to make sure that it's something that, that's portable, that, that, will, that will translate from, from, one, from, from one version of, of, of the media to the next. I'm curious, Bill, because I'm thinking of how I might use this and implement uh, this practice with my clients. Um, and several are using YPTC, by the way. So, <laughs> so I know that they have the, the concept behind this. Um, would you consider, you know, um, if it's an impact report or a quarterly report that you send that out either as like a PDF electronic version or hard copy version, and then you say on that document, you know, to see real-time updates, please visit this link. Mm -hmm. And perhaps that's where you're updating the dynamic information. Um, do you see that, that ability? We, we do, or we'll say, you know, hey, to see the latest information, you know, here's the link you're going to want to go to, or maybe even a QR code. We're starting to see that more where it's yeah. like, hey, you know, use this QR code. It's going to take, you know, I mentioned one of one of the clients we worked with, uh, you know, put what they call their, their KPI report, their leverage report that shows their impact right on their website. And it's all live and interactive and you can, can click through it even by program to see the impact that each program is having. It's absolutely um, phenomenal and has been utterly really transformative for them. Yeah. yeah. I love this. And I think it's really where, you know, this next generation of donors and funders and, and, and philanthropic investors mm -hmm. want to go. They want to see this. And I think that mm -hmm. we need in the nonprofit sector, we need to kind of get away from the if it's bad news, we don't want to share it or we want to hide it. We only want to promote the good news. And so mm -hmm. I think this is a really interesting time. It is. And I mentioned, you know, kind of our, you know, our approach to how we'll put a, you know, a static graphic together. And I mentioned kind of that, that headline, that interpretation um, and the graph itself, but there's actually, there, there's two other, what we call sort of required elements. So we have five things that we say need to be on, on every static chart or graph. So I mentioned the first three, the other, the other two are, well, who prepared it? Uh, you know, so we know, Hey, it was a real person, right? Or this is the person we can go to with questions. And the other item, which arguably might be the most important, um, although arguably any of the five could be most important, but that final one is the source. Where'd you get the data from? Because even if it's bad news, good or bad news, you know, we want to build credibility. We want to have that credibility with the reader where they can say, oh, this came from the accounting system, or this came from our budget, or this came from the fundraising database, or maybe a combination of all three, which is the neat thing. Like that goes back to my, my data smoothie comment, right? Like you can combine data from multiple sources, which which is fantastic. Yeah. And, and I want to add to that. And thank you so much, Bill, because this has really got my brain uh, revving in high gear because there's so many ways to, to implement and utilize this, I believe. I want to give a shout out to anyone doing uh, grant writing and submitting proposals because these documents, when you're given the opportunity to add any additional documentation, this is good information to attach. So again, that smoothie or that meatloaf concept, you know, this is not only for accounting and this is not only for board discussions. This truly can be used to, to level, you know, your message, your narrative in that form of submission for proposals. I love, 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 love when the option comes up to attach up to three additional documents and they don't tell you what it, what it has to be. That to me is a great time to go and say, 
what good information do we have that's relevant, it's timely, you know, and I might attach this. The other good news is you can often attach multiple PDFs, right, and merge them into one PDF. So maybe you have, you know, a couple of documents, but you want to put them into one. Yeah. That's, that's fantastic. So I just wanted to make sure that we, we take that meatloaf recipe even further. <laughs> I love it. You know, Bill, this has been amazing. And um, we are really, really um, excited to have you back on to keep going with this because, you know, this is one of those topics that is really, um, I feel like it's building um, interest and steam. It's a new way of communicating um, and it's a, it's a stronger way of communicating. And so this is just, I think, a magical time for all of us in the nonprofit sector to really understand this. We do have you coming back on um, to talk more about this because this is where we need to be and, and we need to be understanding this. So thank you. I love that you're a CPA and that you are in swimming in this stream. I think it's super cool. I really do. Um, here's yeah, the it's like I said, it's so fun to be at this like intersection of, of accounting and technology. <laughs> It's amazing. And, and I'm grateful that everybody um, on your side is thinking about it because I got to believe that this could be uncomfortable for some of uh, folks in, in the accounting realm, that it, it, it's, it's kind of changing the way that they look at information and that they present information. Mm -hmm. Here's Bill's information, so to speak, on the data vis visualization um, piece. Um, your part-time controller. Again, we have Bill coming back on to talk more about this. And this is, as we like to say, an, an evolving story. It's only getting better and, and getting more interesting. Uh, so, Bill, this has been fabulous. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I want to make sure everybody, I, that I publicly thank Jarrett Ransom, my intrepid co-host, um, the nonprofit nerd herself for giving me a break last week. It was really nice. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jarrett, for holding down the fort. I do appreciate it. Again, we want to thank all of our presenting sponsors. Without them, I wouldn't have been allowed to go away last week. <laughs> <laughs> Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, Fundraising Academy, Nonprofit Nerd, your part-time controller, staffing boutique, and nonprofit thought leader. Again, we want to say thank you to all of those folks that are with us day in and day out. You know, Jarrett, um, I was at a real low point when I left on vacation. I needed a break for so many reasons. And so I really know what it means as we finish up every episode, as we always like to tell everyone and remind ourselves, stay well so you can do well. Hey, everybody, thanks so much for joining us.